Oh, joining me today is my dear friend of, can you believe it? I think over 30 years right. now. Forever. Right, is Forever. right at least over thirty years. I remember the day I met you too. Is Mark McHugh and Mark? Welcome to Gruff Talk. My pleasure. Hey, Barbara, how are you? I'm pretty darn good, <laughs> <laughs> especially because I'm hanging with you for a while. Yeah, oh, <laughs> always you. fun for me. Now, listen, I just said to everyone that I've known you for over thirty years, and it is because you've known my husband Howard for well over 30 years. And that's how I know you because I married Howard, right? I met so, Howard the first day of college. <laughs> that's a way better. It's a story you both love telling. Yes, it's a do. story you just both love telling. It's so great. It was yep. the first day of college. It wasn't yep. even like the first week, the first, the first day. He had uh, glasses like I thought John Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> he had brown glasses, and uh, uh, I didn't know him at first. And then we uh, we met, and slowly but surely, the ball got rolling, and he and I are ace buds. Yeah, <laughs> a long, long time. How long was his hair back then? His hair you was say? long back then. It was Since long, right? I mean, I've seen photos, no but... <laughs> Barbara, I had an afro back then. Uh, his hair was down to his shoulders, maybe. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. A little reddish, curly. Yeah. 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 Yep. 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 That's why we now have one redhead, curly headed redhead in the family. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Who I've met. Thank you. Yeah. So, Mark, you know what? Everyone knows a lot about you, but why don't you just kind of give us a little tour, like down memory lane a little bit of what you have been doing for, you know, since your early days when you decided you want to be on the air. Tell us about okay. that. Here we go. Barbara, yeah. before that, I was a rock and roll DJ, Baltimore, Detroit, Chicago, New York. When I left Detroit to go to Chicago, I was replaced by a young DJ from Hartford, Connecticut. His name, Howard Stern. I've known Howard <laughs> forever. Okay. Uh, um, then oh, uh, Howard I, Stern, darn yeah, him. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, uh, I, you get fired a lot in radio. I got I didn't get fired before I got to New York, where I got fired twice. And the second time, I was in the Daily News newspaper and uh, uh, my executive producer turned to his wife and said i think i found my weatherman so they called me up uh they knew i had left newfm and the guy said um, i'm one of the producers of this morning show i thought wcbs fm i thought well, that's an oldie station i didn't want to play right oldies, right i, I listen to it sometimes <laughs> so um i i thought you're lucky if you have one producer in the morning have producers okay and then he says we're going up against gma in the today show and i say hold on we're, are you talking about television he said yes interested yeah <laughs> so I, had, I went down the black mm -hmm. rock the phone was blowing up the guy uh who saw me is asking me uh, are you a mets fan or a yankee fan do you have brothers and sisters how long have you lived in new york and i'm thinking you're asking me dumb stuff found out he was sizing me up and then mm -hmm. he said uh how do you feel about doing the weather Truth was, Barbara, I could care less about the, the weather. But when they ask you, you don't say no. I said, I could. He said, sure, you could. We'll get your meteorologist. We'll have one audition. And do me a favor. Don't tell anybody about this. I said, okay. Went downstairs, told everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so the one audition was in a, um, uh, 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 a studio that was packed. He said, I'm going to stand next to the uh, camera, talk to the camera. I used to do stand up comedy. And I always say I was so funny doing that. I ended up in news. That's how funny I was. 
So he <laughs> said, is there anything I can ask you that can lead you into your comedy? Well, I said, ask me where I went on vacation recently. Okay, so he's talking, talking, talking. Then he says, where'd you go on vacation recently? And I say, Jamaica. Everyone in Jamaica has an accent. Where are you from, Mon? What's your name, Mon? How you doing, Mon? I said, even the dogs bark, bark, Mon. And everyone laughed. And I thought, <laughs> I think I got this job. That my first job in TV was on national TV. And that was... I was just glad to be there. Had no idea that people do their whole careers to get there. Yeah. So uh, what was uh, the name of the show, Mark? Uh, the, that show was <laughs> called uh, The Morning Program. And then mm -hmm. uh, they, that got canceled. They kept one person, me. And so um, I, uh, that show was called CBS This Morning. Um, right. Barbara, being a DJ... And I like research. I like knowing things. I was like, I'd like to interview people because news anchors would get through people as fast as they could to get back to news guys. For me, I was like, is that B.B. King? <laughs> so uh, you could see when I finally began to ask people questions, they would cock their head and they say, you could see them thinking, a question about music. <laughs> how <laughs> nice. And so that's how I began. Barbara, I covered the Grammys, the Oscars, the Golden Globes, the Country Music Awards. I uh, We covered three Winter Olympics, Alberville, Lillehammer, and Nagano in Japan, where I ran with the Olympic torch. I'll never forget that. Oh, <sighs> the Gruffermans were so proud. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, my daughter, you, you met her, Maya. Maya was maybe two, three, four. Uh, and I was gone for two weeks. When I came back, she followed daddy from room to room to room. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave, daddy. Don't leave. Oh, Maya, Maya was so cute. She was such that a was cute little thing. TV yeah. for me. She's still a cutie. She's still a cutie. <laughs> so how many presidents have you interviewed, Mark? Uh, five. U.S. presidents. Uh -huh. Five. Six, if you count Donald Trump, who I interviewed before he became president. So All right, we'll uh, include uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> my guy, George H. W. Bush, my guy, who uh, proclaimed may as stroke awareness month back mm -hmm. when he did it it meant nothing to me now it means a whole lot to me thank you for that segue into my next question mark something happened to you a number of years ago that really yep. did change your life yep what happened uh barbara i had a stroke and my stroke was bad I was in a coma for two days, uh, intensive care for a week, hospital for a month, uh, re uh, learning how to rehab for a year. It changed my whole life. Um, you had to relearn a lot of things. Everything. everything. I had really to everything. learn to talk, had to learn to walk. This hand, my, I'm right-handed, mm -hmm. it shakes. So I, I do everything one day I was writing and it was squiggly and I thought, heck with this, I'll do it left-handed. So I learned how to do everything left-handed, shaving, mm -hmm. putting in contacts, uh, uh, eating, drinking, uh, um, uh, the whole thing. Um, again, it's something I didn't think I would do. If you told me, uh, no, nah. but it was something I had to do. And uh, I want people... I always say you don't hear lucky and stroke in the same sentence. I'm lucky because there are people who've had a stroke. Their arms are drooped up. Their faces are down. They're in wheelchairs. Uh, Barbara, I speak around the country. Uh, and when I do, uh, uh, I say to the person who brought me, I'll be right back. I go over to where the stroke survivors are. Barbara, it's like coming home. 
It's like coming home. I hug them because my neighbor didn't have a stroke. My cousin didn't have a stroke. My co-worker didn't have a stroke. I did. So when they say I'm in rehab, I'll, I'll say, what kind? Uh, then we talk about rehab. I, I tell them mine. Uh, I always tell them, don't give up. Don't give up. Hope is a very, very powerful emotion. And uh, Barbara, I'll be honest. Um, I used to hear and read about things happening to other people. And then it came and got me. And you want the world to stop because you have, it doesn't work that way. Off it goes. I'm like, hey, hey. So, you know. But you know, when you go around the country and you give these talks, which you do frequently, um, you are so inspiring to these people who have experienced stroke, are in the throes of possibly, you know, going through rehab, and even the families and the loved ones of people who have had stroke, who are there to be supportive and to learn more. And, and you know, what's of great interest to me and to a lot of people listening right now is how to prevent stroke and the signs of stroke and what kind of lifestyle uh, habits should we be embracing right now? Again, most of my listeners are in midlife. Um, hopefully, a lot of them have been embracing all of these healthy habits throughout their lives, but you know, maybe not. <laughs> but what can we all be doing right now? What have you okay. learned? And what do you share with your audience when you're what talking I've about that? What I've learned by Mark McKeown. Uh, Barbara, <laughs> I, uh, it's been 18 years since my stroke. I'm lucky. People don't know I've had one. I know. <laughs> but I've lost 50 pounds. I exercise on a regular basis. Um, exercise doesn't mean joining a gym. It just go for a walk. Uh, out there, uh, uh, walking raises the heart level, makes the heart stronger. And uh, uh, again, you don't have to walk 10 miles. Walk to the end of the, dri the, the driveway. Then walk to the end of the street. Then walk around the block. And when you get outside, and outside is fun. You hear birds chirping. The, uh, uh, cars go by. You say hi to people and all that. And uh, um, don't worry about being slow because you're on a mission. You're on a mission to get healthy. Barbara, I'm pretty much vegetarian. Uh, I'll eat... Um, chicken every now and again. I'll eat fish every now and again. I never was a steak guy. Uh, I, I don't really miss uh, like uh, meatloaf and all that. Um, but I'll say this, everything in moderation, including moderation. Um, the <laughs> key for me is if you can't remember when you had chocolate chip cookies, have some. The key there is some. And then go back to being uh, on your uh, uh, best behavior. Uh, it, Barbara, if you had told me I could never eat chocolate chip cookies again, I would have <laughs> eaten every one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you can alter your lifestyle, but uh, make it so it's not a burden. Make it so it helps and works for you. Barbara, I go to the uh, Publix grocery store, I see people smoking. I see people yeah. who are overweight. Yeah. I see, and I say to myself, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> that's not good. And so uh, you have to take care of yourself because as you get older, you have to make the odds work in your favor. And that helps the odds work in your favor. Yeah, you know, there's something that's uh, a, a term that's being bandied about a lot lately, and it's called exercise snacks. And okay. what you just described is kind of like an exercise snack where you just go out to your driveway or around your block. It's like a small amount of time. But if you do that several times during the day, or maybe go down on the floor and do 10 push ups and or a right. couple of squats and then go about your business and go about your day and then maybe do it again, do a plank and 
take another walk, walk your dog, whatever it is you do. You don't have to spend, as you pointed out, a lot of time. You don't have to go to a gym. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You just probably need a good pair of running shoes or sneakers that will be comfortable and supportive enough. So when you are doing all of these exercise snacks, you'll be comfortable. So, (laughs) and also eating, so, so important. Um, My equilibrium is messed up. The first time I laid flat and tried to do a sit up, I thought I thought I was having another stroke. You can't do that. Uh, I can't do that. Um, So uh, what do you uh, mean by that? You mean you you get dizzy? I get dizzy. Yeah, the whole thing. As they say, the whole Megillah. And uh, so what I do is walking and I go to a gym. When I go to the gym, I don't do uh, weights and all that. I just walk on a treadmill. And I listen to music uh, with headphones, uh, Zeppelin and Journey. <laughs> Classic that. rock. That's what I do when I'm running. Right, right. <laughs> Classic so, rock. Um, uh, it just, yeah, it's great. Yeah, you have to make the odds work in your favor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what have you learned? Like, what was the most important lesson that you learned, do you think, from all of this? I mean, you mentioned eating well. You mentioned, of course, exercising, moving your body, I think, is the way we really like to talk about it. So it doesn't sound like, oh, they're pushing exercise down my throat, right? It's just keep moving your body and it'll all be good. It'll be such a positive impact. But like, what else? I mean, you had the support of your wife and your family and your friends and other loved ones. And of course, the whole community who watched you for years or (laughs) listened to you for years on radio. So you had that also, right? Uh, You know, Barbara, um, I... I used to be able to eat a whole pepperoni, extra large pizza by myself. <laughs> can't do that. Can't do that. Not to mm. say you can't eat pizza, but again, once in a while. What I've learned is, Barbara, when I was younger, comic books, rem- uh, remember them, at the back of one, it said, would you rather be rich and they showed a guy in bed with a butler, so rich, but he couldn't get out of bed, or be poor and be able to dance a jig down the lawn. <laughs> Guess what? As you get older, your health is more important. Uh, if you can't can't get up and can't move around, uh, what good is getting older? Uh, um, uh, again, you can be as rich as King Midas and can't move. Uh uh-uh. uh. So what I've learned is take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Right. Um, uh, don't give up. But as you get older, take care of yourself. And I'm not going to lie to you. Um, <laughs> Barbara, getting older is something that happens to all of us. <laughs> and, and if but, I like to say, if we're lucky. Yes. If we're lucky, mm-hmm. if we're lucky is Not right. everyone gets that blessing of getting older. I always say this beats the alternative. Mm. The alternative is bye-bye. <laughs> you- so I didn't know, actually didn't know this, or maybe it didn't, I forgot, which is very possible. I didn't realize that uh, George H.W. Bush was the one who made May or pronounced May uh, to be National Stroke Awareness Month, which is what we're in right now, which is right. one of the reasons you and I said, hey, let's have this conversation now to kind of promote stroke awareness and prevention as well. So I didn't know that. So yay, yay. I'll, I'll tell you a story. Um, I met him, interviewed him four times. Uh, he has my number. I had his number. I went back to CBS. Harry Smith came down to Florida to interview me with the camera crew. Yes, and I, I could that. barely talk. I could barely move. And uh, the producer said, would you come up when we uh, uh, run it? I said, New York? No. He said, please, please. Okay, okay, okay. So I flew 
it's one thing to go to Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> it's another thing to go to New York. So I go to New York. I sat there, hugged all the whole studio people, uh, uh, crew and all that. Uh, um, uh, Harry said, there's a lot of tears here. I'll put the Kleenex right next to you. Barbara, I cried through the whole thing. And I mm -hmm. said, um, I hadn't heard stroke survivors. I said stroke victims. And uh, uh, when I first gave my first speech, the head of the National Stroke Association very gently said, we say stroke survivors. I never heard that before. But mm -hmm. when I went there and talked to Harry, as I'm getting out of the studio to go home to the hotel, the phone rings. It's him. And he says, I saw that. You sound great. You look great. I thought, you look, <laughs> you're That's bush. That's so wonderful. <laughs> but, That's a great story. For him to put proclaim May Stroke Awareness Month, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. meant nothing to me. When At that time. It. 1989, mm -hmm. I think it was. Now it means the world to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was him. That was him. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mark, I have to, I'm switching gears just a very little bit. I would love to know, I, and maybe you can't answer this because then it's definitely showing favoritism on your part, but did you have that one interview that you've done over the years that was just like, okay, that's it. I'm done. That was the best interview I ever did. <laughs> best interview I ever had. I can't ever, like, it can't be better than this. Just, I have to stop now. <laughs> I, I'm curious. And if so, what was it? Uh, Barbara, I interviewed everyone. Every, 16 you did. years is a long, long time. Denzel Washington, um, he, the night he won his second Oscar was the night they gave the second Oscar to Sidney Poitier. And so he was like, uh, uh, Ju Julia Roberts was there. I know her. And uh, she knew Denzel because they were in a movie together. I can't remember what it was right now. But afterwards, we had a booth. He comes back. He has the Oscar right between his lap, on his lap. Denzel Washington it's okay. says, <laughs> I need a new angle. And I say new angle. He says, people have been saying for years, I should have won the Oscar for this. I should have won the Oscar for that. He holds up the Oscar and he says, I need a new angle. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, great. Uh, you know, That's um, great. That's great. You've uh, really had so many amazing interviews. I mean, we watched fun. you, great you know, fun. every day and they were just really, really great. And also, great. you know, when you did those interviews at the various events, like you know, at the Oscars or at the Grammys and just amazing. You are, Barbara. as I've often said, Mark, you are one of the greatest interviewers of our time, oh. a master interviewer. Oh, 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 now you, you wrote a book, you wrote a book after yeah. your experience with stroke, which um, yeah. I highly recommend. And in fact, there will be a link to the book in the show notes. So everyone, you. you know, and also on my website when this airs and uh, so people can check it out. But then you've also been writing another book about, right. you know, less about your experience with stroke and more about your experience interviewing all these incredible people. It's been kind of both. Mm -hmm. It's uh, that, uh, the people, uh, Denzel, David Bowie, uh, Bush, Garth Brooks, uh, Joni Mitchell, James T Taylor, C.V. Wonder, all kinds of people. And then it's, uh, in it is what I've learned after having a stroke. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that is not the stroke experience then. It's what the happened afterwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, Barbara, it's been a long uh, journey, long, uh, well, um, uh, learn, learned journey. So, uh, um, but I have to tell you, one thing that meant the world to me, my book was written with a ghostwriter. 
uh, Dan Paisner, and I was uh, in bad shape back then, bad shape. He would uh, uh, interview me, and I would answer, and then he would send me the manuscript, and he said, change it however you want. When he uh, uh, wrote about Tony Bennett, he wrote about him like People Magazine would. Uh, Tony's my yeah, butt. in that <laughs> term. Mm -hmm. I, I said... I'll write Tony, I'll write Garth, I'll write my father, and don't you change a word of it. Okay, when I I write a blog, when I set the blog, it's Your on Your blog Facebook. is great, by the way. Thank you, thank you. He and said read by a lot of people. Me, he said the words to me that meant so much, he said, you don't need no stinking ghostwriter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is amazing from... like you're uh you're like a triple threat is that the term like you're, you're so cute <laughs> and a great guy but you're a great interviewer and you're a great writer so like Thank wow you. and by the way i just want to share with you that right now um my dog a lot of people know who listen that pete my Brittany dog is very often in the no always in the room with me <laughs> when I do this podcast and normally it's at a time of day where he's like had this big walk he's had this food he's like cool he's sleeping but it's right now it's around his dinner time and he is like an alarm clock and he's sitting there and he's like staring at me right how old is he now he's so funny he just turned 10 Alola. He just turned what? 10. I know it's, it's so crazy. I'm sorry to interrupt your story. But anyway, yeah, you're a great writer. Your blog gets a lot of comments on social media because I, I see it. I read it. You know, it's uh, you're really, really good. And so I'm looking forward to seeing this next book. Thank you. It'll be Thank really, you really fun. Much. You know, you didn't answer my question, Mark. Like, who was Which that? Is? Who was that best interview? Barbara, well, and you I don't have listen if it's going to hurt feelings out there, then <laughs> no, no. Um, my answer <laughs> is they were all good, mm -hmm. uh, they were just I like talking to big people and everyday people, just yeah. the same. The fun for me is getting people to talk, getting them to think. Uh, um, I always say, do your homework because I'll give you an example. TV, Barbara, is full of people who are pretty and dumb as a bag of rocks. They write their 10 <laughs> questions and they say, Brad Pitt sits, sits down and they say, tell me about your latest project. And he right. says, you know, on the way over here, I got an AK-47 and shot up a 7-Eleven. And they say, is it a comedy or a musical? <laughs> <laughs> Their answer to the first question can negate all the other questions. If you've done your homework, now you play uh, ping pong. It goes back and forth. And I try to make it not a forward brow kind of interview, a conversation. Uh, yeah. and, and if that's what I uh, aspire to. And so I tell people, forget the cameras, forget the lights, talk to me. And so, yeah. uh, they, you know, and I try, my mom always says, be sweet, be nice. I try to meet, be nice. And, yeah. Uh, oh, definitely you are. I mean, you know, you're, you're not looking, wall. you're not looking for the tears to come down. <laughs> Barbara, I'm looking at my wall, Sting, John Travolta, Bruce Springsteen, Hillary, uh, George Harrison, Joni, uh, Beyonce. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone, Celine Dion, uh, Muhammad Ali, Neil Diamond, Jack Nicholson, Michael Jordan, Richard Pryor, goes on and on. Amazing. Really, so fun. Big so fun. fun. Did you ever, um, did you ever feel like, you know, you were in either giving a talk or um, interviewing someone and you messed up? And you said, Always. oh, my God, I can't believe I just did that. I, I, I will Always. never be able to show my... Did that ever happen to you? or Because you're so Always. smooth. Barbara, I always say there's no one harder on me than me. And so I think, ah, I shouldn't have said that. And people go, Oh, yeah, what? but that's maybe being like critiquing yourself. But did you ever actually mess up where you're like, uh-oh, uh, this yes. is not good. No, okay. right? Uh, you never uh, had that experience, did you? The hardest interview I did 
was Tommy mm-hmm. Lee Jones. Tommy mm. Lee Jones at the time was in The Client, the movie by Grisham, yeah. uh, Susan Sarandon, all that. He also went to Harvard and roomed with Al Gore. I thought, that's great. Didn't know he didn't want to talk about that. Uh, he's kind of a, a curmudgeon anyway. When I brought mm-hmm. up Al Gore, it turned into, yep, nope, yep, nope. I can't go home with yep, yeps and nopes. So I say, uh, what's it like being in a movie uh, uh, written by Grissom about a book that everyone has read? He says, I don't know. I thought, okay, give me one book that meant the touch you. Uh, I don't know. Give me one. Okay, Huck Finn. Why? Barbara? His answer was pure poetry. Uh, he oh. talked about this. He talked about that, what it meant to him, uh, wh- what it meant when he read that. I thought, I'm good. Thank you very yeah. much. See, that's the, that's the exact thing I was saying about how you are really a master interviewer because you, without skipping a beat, you just kind of t- very gently and kindly without getting defensive about the fact that he wasn't giving you any answers except one syllable answers. Yeah. And you turn that around. Yeah. Good. Yay. Yay, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, oh, I Barbara, love it. The, the key it for me is getting people to tell you something, to talk yeah. about things. And yeah. I remember when I first began, I first uh, uh, was interviewing, they gave you, the producer would give you a packet. A packet is how old they are, what they've done, what they're doing now, where they live. And on the packet was an index card of suggested questions. I thought I wouldn't ask them this. And Tony Moranti, my guy, uh, my former sage manager, manager said, ask them what you want to ask them. I said, you can do that? He said, yeah. So from then on, I would take their suggested question, put them to the side. I write my questions. And then I look and see, did I miss anything? And Barbara, 9.5 out of 10, I rarely did. Rarely did. And, you know. That's great. And you, on the other hand, you you don't like to know what you are going to be asked. I mean, this is not the first time that I've quote unquote, if you want to call this an interview, I I feel it's a conversation, but it's not the first time that we've had this kind of exchange and you never want to know what is going to be asked of you. uh, And I know you tell this to other people as well. Yeah. Um, If I, if a person, if I know you start, thinking of things in your head, the correct way to say things. Um, I say your answers are more real for me when I don't know what's coming. Uh, um, It's fun. And, uh, uh, you know, again, if it's something I don't want to answer, I'll say that. But for the most part, don't tell me. Don't tell me. (laughs) You get real answers now. Yeah. All right. So, Mark, you know, National Stroke Awareness Month, uh, you know, also want to put in that word prevention. You know, I know the month is not called that, but I want to add it in anyway. I think everyone needs to listen to your words of wisdom here and move your body. Just eat everything in moderation. I think that was really well said. I mean, if you can have a chocolate chip cookie, ugh. That's not the way to go, really, <laughs> right? You know, None uh, of that really works. It's like not sustainable. Right. Um, in fact, a new study just came out this week about how, from the American Heart Association, about how the very restrictive diets like keto or well, paleo are not that. a not sustainable, right? You saw that too. And mm-hmm. they really aren't good for your heart. In fact, the right. contrary. So, you know, the ones that really are the ones we, we know well too, the Mediterranean diet and the right. very famous DASH diet, um, those really do work. And that's just like, that's like common sense eating. So well, I, you know, I want every, I encourage everyone to think about 
how they eat and maybe just make a few subtle changes, uh, everything in moderation. Um, and also, I really believe keeping stress, uh, you know, at bay as best as possible is really important for your heart health. Uh, yeah. which is, um, you know, connected to stroke, of course. We, we know that. I mean, it can be. And um, sleep, I think, should be a priority. And anything else? Like, what, what, what are, like, some of the things you want to make sure that everyone remembers from our conversation today, Mark? Uh, Barbara, Ben and Jerry's, <laughs> <laughs> you can't have it every day, uh, uh, Barbara. <laughs> It's pretty gosh darn good. Uh, but you have to, like I say, everything in moderation. And yeah. you want, as you get older, I see uh, people, I always say they walk like penguins. I see people mm -hmm. who uh, are, are not taking care of the, themselves. Uh, yeah. Again, you have to take care of yourself. And again, moderation, moderation. Moderation. And also I'd like to add in, you know, get those checkups, get those checkups, yep. especially yep. when you're in midlife and beyond. And yep. uh, make sure that your blood pressure is what it should be. Make sure that your cholesterol levels are what they should be. And if they're not, you know, make the lifestyle changes. And if you need medication, take the medication and be yep. compliant if that's taken. going to help you. Right? Yep. Yep. Uh, Barbara, I take Eloquist. <laughs> we talked about this. Uh, I take mm -hmm. it every day. And so, you know, that, that's what it's for. So you, ever since your stroke, you've been on Eloquist? Is that, is that right? Uh, Barbara was Warfarin at first, and then mm -hmm. I launched Eloquist. I was the host for that in Chicago. And, right. Uh, <laughs> you were part of the launch of Eloquist. Right. Uh, yes. I was on stage, Barbara, they had a teleprompter up here and a teleprompter in front of the stage. They would ask me questions from my book and the answers would be from my book. But I've learned if you're tied to a teleprompter, you're tied to a teleprompter. So what I did, I maybe did one sentence and stopped reading that and just talked to them. And that there were 8,000 people in the audience, including the CEO of Pfizer and the CEO of Bristol Myers Squibb. And I said, I have to say this. I said to them, it's people like you who help people like me. And the place went nuts <laughs> because they don't hear that enough. No, 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 no. Most people like people to bash like the pharmaceutical companies, but right, right. you know, getting back to what we were saying before, I'm a big believer in if you can make all the lifestyle changes that you can to maybe fix some of your health issues like blood yep. pressure or cholesterol, yep. whatever it is. But if at the end of the day, maybe because of genetic reasons or whatever, that you will be helped by a medication, take the yep. medication. Exactly. <laughs> take exactly. the medication. We want Don't to see be... everyone age better and uh, do do whatever you need to do, everyone. Correct? You know, Barbara, there are people who go, I'm not taking it. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm a man. Mm -hmm. uh, heck with all that. You're right. Take the medication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mark, I love you. This has been fun as always. I and mean, we hit on some very serious topics here, but some fun ones too. I hope Barbara, you'll come back. Always, always. And you, my friend, are a great interviewer. Mm, well, I have a lot to learn, Mark. And, you know, maybe you and I should have like a little offline uh, tutorial <laughs> <laughs> on how to be, I'll never be a master interviewer, but how to be a better interviewer. I mean, we can always, everybody can always get better, right? right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but thank you. I'll take the compliment. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Tell Howard and Sarah and Elizabeth, I send my love. I will indeed. And to your family too. And everyone, we will have, you know, all the links to Mark and the book and everything else that you need to know in the show notes and on my website. So Mark, thank you. You'll come thank back you. soon. And I will be thank talking to you soon, of course.
Okay. Thank bye you, bye. Barbara. Bye bye.